Hey, what's up? This is Scott with Level Up Tutorials, and today we're going to talk about using the built-in functions within Stylus. Now, you're going to learn what functions do and why they're there and how they can be totally useful to you. So let's get going on that right now. So once again, we're going to be spending most of our time in the style sheets. As you can see, just like we have for the rest of the videos, I have my CSS on the right here and my stylus over here on the left so we can see exactly what's happening when this compiles. So before we imported some stuff, we've been using mixins, we've been using variables. Now it's time to get into something called functions. Now functions function very much similar to how you have functions in things like JavaScript, where you can pass in some arguments and your function is going to return some sort of value. And if you haven't used a CSS preprocessor, you might be wondering what the value is to have functions in CSS. Well, just imagine that you can modify values. So let's say you have a variable and that variable is a color and then you want to adopt several other variables that are going to be various shades lighter than that. Uh, perhaps maybe 10% lighter, 20% lighter, 30% lighter. Well, you can do that just by using your continuous variable and then using these built-in functions to lighten up your color. That way, if you change the variable, you don't have to change uh, anything else in your in your CSS you don't have to go hunting for all these other values if you change the value of your variable these calculations are still going to be completed on that value itself so that's just a really simple example however there are lots of different interesting things you can do with functions and many functions can be built right in to stylus uh, and if there is something that's not built in, chances are you can either write it yourself or find somebody online who's already written something for you. For instance, one function that I use all the time is the RGBA function. Now the same function exists in SAS and is one of my most used functions there as well. A lot of times you're working with either variables or uh, hex colors and you wanna make them have opacity, right? You wanna make them see through. And before, really the only way to do that would be to type your RGBA. For instance, let's say we wanted to give this main uh, section of our page here, we wanted to give this a background color. And we wanted to give a background color of white. So we might say FFF, okay? Well, let's say we wanted to actually make this uh, white that's 90% uh, opaque. So it has 10% transparency. The way we could do that is just by using an RGB function, an RGBA function actually. So instead of having to know that this is uh, our value RGBA 255, 255, 255, comma 0.9, like we wanted it, we can actually pass in the hex value itself. And we can say, pound FFF. Now this isn't going to be valid working CSS, but as being used as a function, this is actually going to convert this line right here into the line we previously had where it's RGBA 255, 255, 255, 0.9. So let's go ahead and save this. And we can see this compile right here. And that line, like I said, has been converted to the actual usable RGBA value. Now this can be super useful if we wanted to use any of our variables or anything like that. We could just simply say, yeah, this is this blue color. Now this uh, RGB value, this might not be super easy to remember. Uh, in fact, it's not gonna be 255, 255 or 000. We have this uh, wild RGB value that's all sorts of these different numbers. You're never gonna memorize something like this, but you know your variable blue, which we've defined in our vars file, and then we can then get the RGBA value for it right here. So this is one of my favorite time-saving functions. Now it's also a good example to see what kind of stuff you can, uh, the general way functions are. You have your function name, which is RGBA, and then it accepts some arguments. So in this case, it accepts a color as a hex value, and it accepts a uh, level of transparency. Now passed into those, it's going to return these three values and this one value. In the next video, we're gonna show you how you can actually make your own functions. So you might get a little bit better idea about how these things are working internally. 
Now I invite you to go look at the built-in functions page on the stylus uh, documentations. I'll link that in the description of the video. Now there's a lot of these built-in functions and they get uh, anywhere from very useful little shortcuts like this RGBA one to things that might not be so obvious. And in fact, some things might not be seeming useful at all until perhaps you think about uh, libraries that are built for stylus and things and how they've been used. For instance, there's a really great library for stylus called Typographic, and it's basically accepting different ratios, different intervals, and those intervals and ratios are going to completely define every font size on your page. So by passing it one value, it's going to be able to completely calculate all of your font sizes based on different percentages and intervals. So in the same vein as the RGBA and having colors and being able to modify them, we can do things like desaturate. And we can desaturate by using something like uh, grayscale. So this function is just gray scale. And then all we need to do is pass it a color. By saving this, it's going to give us a grayscale version of this blue color. And as you can see, this is the end result is this gray. We can also tint colors. Uh, and then uh, if you haven't taken art classes, uh, tinting is basically mixing the color with the white. So we could say tint. And let's say we want to tint blue. Uh, let's tint this blue 80%. We should be getting a light blue here, which is almost a white. If we tint it a little bit less, let's say 50%, it'll be a little bit more of a recognizable blue. And just like tint, we can also shade things, which is going to be adding black. So we can shade something by 50%, and here we have a much heavier, darker blue than what we had before. You can even do things like invert, and let's get rid of this 50%, save it. And we're gonna get the inverted color, which is this yellow. Or in that same realm here, we could do a complement. So this is going to give you the complementary color. So if we save this, we now have a, another yellow. That's the exact complement. It's sort of an orangish yellow of this color of blue that we're working with. You can even choose to desaturate by a certain amount. So instead of saying, give us the grayscale version, we can desaturate a color entirely using desaturate, uh, I mean not entirely, but by a certain amount. So let's say we want to desaturate this by 50%. It's going to give us a version that's 50% gray. And in this case, it's this grayish blue right here. And we can even do have functions that are having some sort of utility for numbers. Let's say we wanted an absolute value of something. So let's get off this background entirely and let's just say margin top and let's use the ABS function. And ABS is going to be passing in a value. And keep in mind, we can actually have a unit on this and it's not going to care. So we don't actually have to think about, uh, is this a number, is this a unit or uh, whatever. So we can say margin top is negative 10 pixels. And if we save this, the margin top that we're going to get is actually 10 pixels. We can also do things like a ceiling function where we could say seal. And uh, let's say if we give this a value of, um, let's say 4.3 or 4.6, I'm sorry, I don't know why I said three. Uh, we're getting the ceiling of five pixels. And what happens if we get rid of the pixels? It's just going to give us uh, four point, or it's just going to give us five even. And as you know, margin top of five isn't really valid CSS. So uh, it might be nice to have some sort of unit. You'll notice that if we add in percent here, then the percent is also output here. And just like ceiling, we have the floor function that will do the exact opposite. And round, which will round to the nearest digit. We can also have a function that accepts a, a value and it's going to give you the unit. So if we say unit, save this, the unit that comes out is a string of the percentage sign. 
And now this might not be super useful if you need to check something at any given point. Once we get into conditional statements and things like that, it could be totally useful to say, what kind of value am I receiving? Am I receiving a pixel value? Am I receiving a, uh, a percentage sign or anything like that? But you can also use this to assign variables different uh, units. So for instance, if we wanted this 4.6% to actually be 4.6 pixels, all we have to do is comma and then as a string type pixel. And the nature of this function changes entirely. Instead of giving us a unit, it's actually giving us our, our value with the new unit. Now again, some of these features are gonna be sort of abstract and you might be wondering, uh, when am I ever going to be passing in a value uh, as a percentage and wanting it to be a pixel? These actually, these things could come up in really interesting times. For instance, if we wanted to say that the margin left on the body is going to be negative 10 pixels. Now let's say we want the margin right or left on the main to be the opposite of that. We could say margin left. And then just like we use this at color for a variable, we could use at margin left like this. And let's see what this compiles to. You'll see now that body main has a margin left and body has a margin left, both of negative 10 pixels. Well, let's say you want these to offset and you always want them to be offset. One's gonna be negative 10 and the other one's gonna be positive 10. In fact, some grid frameworks work like this where they have a negative margin and then a positive margin. To do that, we could use the absolute value function and we could just say abs function like this. So now, uh, you'll notice that margin left is 10 pixels, body margin left is negative 10. They're gonna be offsetting and uh, uh, one is going to be pushing to the left and one's gonna be pushing negative to the left. So this absolute value is then expecting a negative value and returning a positive value. Now, like I said, this is just a very specific example, but it's really interesting to play around with all of these functions that exist within Stylus. Like I said, I want uh, I want you to spend some time in the docs and just see what exists. That way you know it's possible. So when you're working in your CSS and your Stylus code, you could possibly think, oh, these two values are attached, they're related. When one changes, the other one's gonna be re uh, change and they're not necessarily the same value. How can we describe them in a way that possibly keeps them attached so we don't have to go and modify both values if anything changes? And that's really not just it. Once we get into some of these stylus uh, frameworks and stylus extensions, like I, I mentioned typographic or some of these grid frameworks, it's gonna be really exciting for you to be able to pour through the stylus code that they use to build these and just see exactly what they did because there's a lot of useful things to learn simply by using these functions and seeing how other people are using them. So in the next video, we're gonna show you how you can create your own functions using Stylus. As always, this is Scott with Level Up Tutorials. If you have any questions or comments, leave a comment in the video, hit us up at Facebook or Twitter at Level Up Tutorials. We love to hear from you. Thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next one. Bye.